Today we're going to learn how to interact with these buttons that we're creating. And to do that, we're going to be looking at the on mouse and down event. Now there's a few that we could play with. There's the on mouse down, on mouse up. There's, I think, like on mouse up as button. We're just going to keep it really simple and work with on mouse down. And the way that works is when our game is running, anytime we click on one of our buttons, it's going to trigger this method called on mouse down. And any code that we have inside of on mouse down, will be executed. So let's go ahead and quickly set that up. So I'm just gonna go ahead, well, let's make sure we have the script attached. Here's my prefab of the button. I actually don't have the button script on yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach it. And do you remember what's next? That's right, we go ahead, we hit apply just to make sure that all the changes to our prefab are saved. And let's go ahead and open up that script. All right, so like with every other script, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of everything. And then we're gonna work with on mouse down, but first we need to void on mouse down. For some reason, my keyboard's really lagging. Uh-oh. And that would be a downer if my keyboard died, but that's not the method we're working with. <laughs> we're just gonna work with on mouse down. And just to see it working, I'm just gonna quickly do a debug log. Hmm. Well, I may have to actually recharge my keyboard before we can finish this. All right, let's throw a little click in there. Go ahead, jump back into Unity. We'll go ahead, hit play. And now when I click on this button down here, we get the click event. If we go ahead and take a look here. Now I have them collapsed. If we take the collapse off, every time we click, we'll, we'll see the, uh, the actual click event going off. And for this project, I'm actually gonna keep the, the dialog box separate only because I have the screen real estate. So there we go, we see it firing off. So what are some of the behaviors that we're gonna want? The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is getting it to change color. So we want a default color for the button. And for this button here, let's go ahead and make it the green one. And we also want some sort of highlight color. So when we click on it, it changes to another color and then we can set up some sort of coroutine or even just an invoke and have it switch back. So let's do that step next. So I'm gonna jump into Mono Develop. I'm gonna make these public. Actually, no, let's put our big boy pants on. Let's keep them private. There are colors, I'm gonna call this default color. And I'm gonna go ahead and create another one that I'll call highlight color. I guess we could call it click color as well. Now we're gonna use a special tag here. And this tag is called serialized field. And I've got a whole series on these little tags or attributes. Uh, what we're doing here is enabling it. Well, here, we'll go ahead, we'll keep one non-serialized. We're enabling all of our private variables up here or properties to show inside the inspector, even though they're not public. So in the inspector, they behave like they're public. So if you come over, click on button. Uh, we see we have the default color showing up. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna go ahead and set it. And like I said, this is gonna be my green. Uh, let's go ahead, the default color, I want it to be a little bit darker. Uh, around here, I think. No, around there. It really doesn't matter. OCD kicking in. But anyway, so we have the default color showing up, but not the highlight color. So if we come back in and do our serialized field again, save that off for the highlight color. Once it recompiles, it will show up. Great. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this eyedropper to grab the other color. Then I'm just gonna lighten it up a bit. There we go. Now, when we get into the heavy programming section of the course, I'm gonna go over why we wanna keep these private. Uh, for those that are coming from a more computer science -y, uh, background, we'll already know. But for those still catching up, just think of it this way. If it doesn't need to be exposed, you shouldn't have it exposed. And there's never gonna be a, a point where some other class needs access to it. There's one more tag I wanna go ahead and take a look at here. And again, like I said, I have a series on these. If you go look at the tributes playlist, uh, the other tag I wanna have is disallow multiple components. And I'll go ahead and save that off. And what this does is it stops me from adding more than one of the same component. So if I try to add another button script, it doesn't work. And this will stop, uh, for instance, our on mouse down uh, method firing off twice every time I click on it. Now, because we are doing on mouse down, we could also do a require component of the collider and everything else. Uh, just those two tags for this video is more than enough to learn from. All right, so we got the on mouse down. What I wanna do next is go into start and I wanna set that default color. 
So I can say get component. The component we want is the, I believe it's the mesh renderer. How oh, if there's so many mesh component. Sometimes I get it mixed up. All right, material.color. And I'm gonna set this equal to the default color. And then on mouse down, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Except instead of being the default color now, I want the highlight color. I'm gonna go ahead and save that off. I'll clear that out. And let's go ahead and we'll hit play. So it starts up. Now it should switch green when we start. We see it. And now when I click it, notice how it changes to the lighter color. We do need a way to go ahead and switch it back. And for that, I was originally gonna do coroutines. Let's put coroutines off a little bit. Let's just go ahead and keep playing with that invoke method that we learned about last week. So I'm gonna have another method. It doesn't need to be public, so we'll keep it private. And I'm just gonna say reset button. And what I want this method to do is go ahead and reset the button to its default values. Right now, the only thing we're doing is color. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this back to the default color. And as far as code reuse goes, I noticed we're just doing the exact same thing here. And if you think about it, when the game starts, we're just, we wanna make sure that the button is in the default state. And I guess we could probably even put some sort of default into the method name up here. I'm not going to. What I'm gonna do is just call reset button. That way there, when we start up, we are gonna call the reset button method. So we are gonna reset the color. Then when we go ahead and click here, we no longer need the debug. We will go ahead, set the highlight color. Then we're gonna go ahead and invoke, not invoke repeating, we'll just invoke. And the method we wanna invoke is the reset. I like doing it without the parentheses first. That way there you don't have to worry about all the typos. Fortunately, model developers wanting to add all of the, or both quotations at the same time. But anyway, so next thing we wanna do is a time. So how long from after this invoke method line of code is reached should we call it? And I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna come up here, create another serialized field. This time will be a float. And this is a time in seconds. So I'm gonna say, I don't know, quarter of a second, maybe. Seems like a good start for me. And of course we should give it a name. So we're gonna go ahead and say, I don't know, button delay, uh, reset delay. Sounds good. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off and we'll just go ahead and add that here. Great, so we're gonna go ahead, quarter of a second, we're gonna call this. We should set it back to the color. Now, of course, we could also add another timer saying, no, they can't click that button again until uh, the reset timer is um, reset. I guess we could even just make it simple. Go ahead and disable the collider and then re-enable it here. I'm not gonna do that, but I guess for homework, it's something you could look at. So let's go ahead, we'll start it off, we'll hit play. So now when I click it, we see how it stays. It's the light color and then switches back. Just to give it a little bit more emphasis, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. So one second delay, it seems like a quarter delay was perfect. Right? All right, so we've got it changing colors. Let me go ahead and put this back. And let me just quickly look over here. So today we went over the different, uh, two different tags. I'm gonna go ahead and link the playlist down below in class, we're actually gonna go over it. But for those on the interwebs, I'll go ahead and link that so you can actually go ahead and take a look at it as well. So we've gone ahead, we set up a reset function. We've got our invoke that we're gonna be using and we've found a way to actually go ahead and change the color. Now to speed things up for the next video, go ahead, head over to the asset store and try to find some sound effects. We're gonna want four different sound effects and we want very quick sound effects, little beeps. Uh, so when we actually click the buttons, they beep and bop and everything else. I'm gonna go ahead and grab mine in the next video. But if you've already got yours downloaded and set up, it'll just make the next video a little bit faster for you.